Welcome back to Let's Play. Alice? Really? Fucking Harvest Goddess was leading right up until Alice showed up. Now the thread- all, everyone in the thread wants me to marry Alice. Thanks a lot. Well, you know, you can have all the benefits of a corporation now, or you can have the favor of the most unreliable recurring character in the franchise. Divinity, that doesn't help anyone. Exactly. Or is actively detrimental. Right. See the other Let's Play. So, yeah, I, I think it's a rational decision myself. Indeed. Speaking of you, uh, joining me on this part is We're on the Wind. Hello. Now, uh, you have not played this version, but you have played the original Save the Hoveland. Yes, I have. Judging from just the last couple of parts, how do you think it compares? This is definitely better, although I will say that the art style, especially with uh, Potato Face, it was me, Dio, here, it's... Uh, <laughs> it's I'm sorry, I must interrupt you. Crabs. Crabs. This game has crabs. Yeah, crabs. That sounded worse. That sounded cuter in my head. It sounded much worse <laughs> when it came out. Also, we picked up a clam. That technically counts as a fish, but it's one of the few that we actually pick up on the ground. Anyway, please continue. Well, as long as we're following up stuff about relationships with crabs, I think we're okay. <laughs> yes, this game has crabs. <laughs> I have a description for this video now. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, where was I? <laughs> I completely forgot. Oh, yeah, the uh, the art style. Right, right. I found the art style in Save the Homeland to be interesting because it was a departure from the typical Harvest Moon type uh, appearances and designs, what with it being cell shaded I think it was the first cell shaded game, and it seemed to go kind of a Sonic 06, let's make everyone taller and pinkier type deal, uh -huh. as opposed to everyone being like a short little caricature type deal. You can see the chicken there actively trying to get in the way. Yeah, I saw that. That's why I stuff him all the way back there. It is El Pollo Diablo, here to foil all of your good, <laughs> honest efforts. I have much better luck this time than I did yesterday. Here you can see the door still likes to be a problem. <laughs> That's just great. It's like, no, you don't walk to leave the room, you have to press the door. And the chicken's just like, I know that I need to go through this door, but I do not know how to press the A button. Uh oh. Or the cross, or whatever it is on this. Oh, my backpack is full. I'm just running around desperately. What do I do with this egg? <laughs> Give it to Tim. Tim likes eggs. Shit. But I want to hang on to the egg. So, <laughs> because money. So I'm just like, egg or caterpillar? Isn't friendship the most valuable thing you could accrue? Well, not if I can't open doors. <laughs> if you have anything in your hands, you can't open a door. Is Tim outside or inside? Well, it is raining today, and it is our first rainy day, but Tim always stays at home when it's raining. Ah. But sadly, he, he gets neither the egg nor the caterpillar, because I need to get indoors. Defeated by the weather. Indeed. Finally managed to get to the cafe while it is a cafe, and not just a pub. Yeah, I think that's a, a, a version difference. I don't recall there being a cafe function in Save the Homeland. I do know Katie, the ending that involves her is basically the same, so I would think it would involve a cafe of some sort, unless she just likes baking. I don't know, I never did anything involving her, and I tend to avoid like the pub analog whenever I play a Harvest Moon game, because they're usually not that useful. Uh-huh. So, it's also, like, been ten years since I played that, so, you know, hazy. Right. Okay, same puzzles last time. Alright, let's do it speed run. <laughs> well, no matter what your speed run effort is going to be, it's going to be zero because the time is not passing here. Shit. <laughs> I should put a clock just down in the corner. That just doesn't progress at all. <laughs> well done, you did it in 0.00.00. .00. <laughs> oh, 
I don't know how you did that. Oh, there we go, new type of metal. Hey. Rare metals, another one of the metals that we use to upgrade our tools. I think this is the only Harvest Moon game that doesn't use copper, silver, and gold for your tools. Even though it says it's used to modify tools. Yeah, like, I can't think of any other game that uh, has, you know, something other than that progression. I know this game has Orichalcum, which is another metal we haven't seen yet, but it is used for tools, and I think some other Harvest Moons have used that one. Right. I'm trying to remember when I played more Friends of Mineral Town, and I remember that one being a little funky about tool upgrades, but I don't remember the specifics. I think that's one of those games where you have to actively use the tools before you can upgrade them. Yeah, that, that, that that's pretty much what I mean by funky, as in uh -huh. actively irritating to do. Right. We were talking before this, uh, you didn't care for Magical Melody. No, 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 no. And that was one of the functions in that game as well. Admittedly, that wasn't one of the functions that I minded because the way they went about going with the upgraded tools was at least ridiculously anime amusing enough for me to give it a pass, but that game uh -huh. has so many other problems that that doesn't save it. Here, I'm just kind of getting lost. The annoying thing about Rainy Days in this game, especially since it's so early on for me, there's just... there's not a lot to do. I can't do some of the part-time work, like working for Woody, because it's just not an option when it's raining. And I can't take care of the animals, because Bob keeps them indoors. Right. So I just spent pretty much the entire day just wandering around. I'm going to enjoy being able to mine without spending five hours doing it. <laughs> From, from zero to 50 and nothing flat. Right? Basically, that's the speed run right now. Five hours. <laughs> flat. Also very impressive, although for decidedly different reasons. <laughs> Can't say I'm proud of it. I like to keep at least just one mineral crystal in there. Because there's one or two different endings that at various points will require multiple types of ore. Right. That's a typical business of, oh, you need this thing that only shows up occasionally. Time to just hang on to it forever. Exactly. There's a couple things that are like that. Just wait till I get the refrigerator. Oh, the fridge. Also, you notice the dog. Uh, after about 8 p.m., all the animals will go to sleep. But if you walk up to them, they'll wake up again. Right. Speaking of which... It's TV time. Was that a hurricane report in there I saw? Uh, thankfully, no. I think, although there are um, heavy weather situations, though I think this is one of the few games where there's not significant loss involved with those. I just remember the first time I played the original Harvest Moon and I saw the little broadcast for there's a hurricane tomorrow and it's just the newscaster lady flipping the hell out. Thankfully, this game as well as Tale of Two Towns, once heavy rain or whatever happens, it doesn't necessarily stop you from being able to go outside. Which bothered the hell out of me in Harvest Moon 64. Right, yeah. Now, I recorded this before anyone voted on names, so I just kind of went with my default. <laughs> a long scream. Well, that seems about an appropriate reaction when you have to deal with the chicken coop. And I did it for this. Ah! No problems here. <laughs> Uh, the bad jokes are always the best jokes. Later chickens will have names that people in the thread have suggested. Yeah, I said this in the thread, but whenever I play Harvest Moon game and I go, it's time to naming chickens and whatever, I always name the first one Duck, <laughs> and then the next one Goose. I think I did that once. Yeah, I just, incre I just name them increasingly different fowl, like quail and whatever. 
No, I think it was my dog that I named Duck. <laughs> or maybe I'm thinking of a Let's Play I saw once. I can't remember. I don't know. It definitely wasn't mine. I can tell you that. <laughs> right. Barely in the morning, sometimes you can catch some of the people going out of their houses and heading into their shops. Oh, look at that time go by. I like that all these people have their own schedules. Yeah. So it makes finding them sometimes difficult. Yeah, that's something I always appreciate in a game. The thing about Woody's shop, the shop itself is open straight away right at the beginning of the morning. But uh, being able to do part-time work for him depends on him actually being outside, which isn't until like 9 or 10 a.m. Yeah, we can do business straight away, but unless I'm feeling the glorious warmth of the sun, well, you're not working for me, boy. I'm really poor. <laughs> so are we, in fairness. We only just got our first crop today. I guess maybe his, uh, his pocketbook is solar-powered or something. I can never see that guy and not see Basil. Like, I know that's who he is, just with some weird name change, but it's like, that is such a strange decision to me. Yeah, he's exactly the same. Those, I think, it, like, his chin is just not as sharp. <laughs> because potato faces. I don't know, art style. So he got in the ring with Little Mac and changed his name out of shame or something? <laughs> Sure. That's <laughs> a good reason, is any. Stocking up on some seeds, I see. Yep. Gonna take me a while before I can plant them, though, because uh, some of these plants, they don't go immediately from seeds to sprout overnight. I think the carrots and potatoes do, but, like, the rice... I'll have to wait a little while to do that, and if you have seeds out while it's raining, there's a chance they'll get washed away. Yeah, I remember that being a thing in Save the Homeland that annoyed me. Like, Save the Homeland was a drastic departure from the Harvest Moon formula in just about every way conceivable. Yeah. So... Going to that after playing any other given Harvest Moon game was kind of a shock to the system. Like, it just changed all the rules on you. It's a wonder I beat it. I can't remember actually finding all of the places to sell your items. Because it was the first Harvest Moon game without a shipping bin. Yeah. Like, the Harvest Sprites even mentioned that, like, there's no such thing as a shipping bin. And if you had never played Harvest Moon before, that wouldn't be anything in question. But if you had, then you're just like, why? Exactly. That means I have to spend three hours walking into town because I don't have a horse. God, yeah. I played a little bit of it again recently, just before I got here of Leaf Valley. And the layout of the town is horrible. And they didn't, ha they didn't have a mining section in either. At least I don't recall. I don't recall mining in that one either. I don't remember the first one that I played that had mining. I think that may have actually been Magical Melody. Mining Magical Melody was cool. I recall that being one of the better parts. Especially once winter rolls around, you have nothing else to do. So we finally got a fishing rod. Yes, you did. And they changed it up for this one as well. It's also a kind of mini game, and I like it. I can tell already that this is better. Yeah. This fishing in Save the Homeland is awful. Well, first, we just caught a fish, and uh, Ponta, when you give him a fish, you can either choose to get a recipe from him or get a fish print. We want the fish prints, because that's going to open up new fishing spots. Right. The recipe, it'll either be specific to the fish you just caught, or if you've gotten that specific recipe, he'll give you one of the generic fish recipes. 
I take it there's no bonus or anything, or like he won't take it if you've already received both of the prizes. Oh no, he'll take all the fish that you give him. He'll even take the clam. You just don't get anything for it. Ah, better if you've gotten your prizes, you don't get anything. Yeah. Except the pleasure of having made Ponta happy. Well, there we go. It's a, it's its own reward. So the fishing in this game is quite interesting. There are fish on three different levels. Depending on how close the line is to the shore, the lowest level will either be extremely small or not. But you just let the line rise and fall until you get to where the fish is. The color of the fish that you see will either go from black to blue to light blue, which correlates to where it is. For example, we're going to be going for the fish that's all the way at the bottom. Right, right. Once the fish is bitten, it'll start shooting out rings, and you want to have the rings line up with the circle surrounding the fish, and you do that until you've basically pulled the fish all the way to you. And jerk it out of its skin. <laughs> the trash does return in this game, though thankfully you do not hang on to the trash. Your character immediately disposes of it, and he only hangs on to the actual fish. I kind of wish it would just be like a gigantic trash pile and Ponta just claims claim to it. It's like, this is my refurbishment community. Sell for 10 gold. <laughs> What's funny, I gave him a surf smelt, but he gives me a smelt recipe. You cannot use the surf smelt in the fried smelt recipe. Perhaps he's trying to tell you something. <laughs> Give me what I really want. There's a couple of fish like that. Like, there's an octopus, and then there's, like, an oscillated octopus. <laughs> and you can't use the oscillated octopus to cook anything. If it's an octopus that's vibrating at, you know, <laughs> at that kind of speed, I don't think you can use it for anything. <laughs> I'd use it as a mixer until I get it. I mean, what can you do other than throw it at someone and completely ruin their day? I might be misremembering what it's called. I haven't caught one in a little while. I hope it's an oscillating octopus. That would make fan art. <laughs> Fuck, make it anyway. <laughs> I want to see what that looks like. Just I do too. I think there's like an octopus that uses its legs to spin around in water in one of the Banjo-Kazooie games. I think I remember something like that. Now, if you notice, because I was fishing and everything, I lost a lot of stamina. And when the ring starts getting more red, the character's face will actually get progressively sadder. Right. I like to eat some herbs until I've got him smiling again. That's basically a guarantee that you're not going to wake up sick tomorrow. Oh, yes, the Harvest Moon tradition of chuffing all kinds of natural herbal remedies in order to make it through the next day after completely overexerting yourself. Case in point today, when it's heavily raining. Now you can see one of the... I think that was one of the rice seeds. There's a chance it may not be there tomorrow. So let's cross our fingers. I just figured I'm just going to go ahead and drop a mineral crystal there in either case. I mentioned before, the mineral... Um, oh! Where's doggies eating? Oh, it's a dog. Hooray. It's the traditional one, for that matter. Mm hmm People are leaning a lot more towards the pointy-eared one. Breaking tradition, I guess. Yep. And since I brought the chicken in early, he's not sick. Ah, no problems here. <laughs> Always makes me laugh. But, uh, oh. I'm... It knows exactly where it is. It's in the chicken coop that is unnavigatable. No kidding. Now, uh, let's... Uh, when I put in the mineral crystal, I mentioned before, mineral crops can't be used for cooking, and uh, really it's only useful for making them worth a little bit more when you sell them. But uh, when you put a mineral crystal on a recurring crop like rice, that first crop that you get will only be the mineral one. Later crops will just be the normal rice. Hmm. So... Good for a demonstration, at least. And uh, there's a few delivery requests that specifically ask for mineral crops. Right. 
Though I don't think we have any in this season right now. Yeah, I haven't seen any come up on the list, at least. Here, you can see, because it's raining, not only is my strength going down, but so is my wariness. Yep, operating out in the rain is pretty much auto-sickness in Harvest Moonverse. In this game, it's a little harder to judge. Like, I got sick once when I let the wariness go down a half. But uh, if you'll keep letting your wariness go down, your character will look more and more like they're actually going to get sick. Right. And then we get out of the rain. And then go right back in. And then we go back into the rain. <laughs> because this job is only open from Monday to Friday. Uh-huh. You can't time slip your way past the rain. Well, I probably could if I... I went and... Oh, no, wait. I think, um... Marge. Her name's not Marge. I, I, can, I always forget... What was it, Marge? The lady's name. Uh, it's the, the maid that works at the villa. Uh... I don't know. <laughs> I, I watched that video, like, three weeks ago or something. When did you start the thread? <laughs> I, it was, like, just last week, wasn't it? Or maybe... The, oh, I'm, I'm dead. Feels like it was more than one week. Oh, yep. Yeah, I think she actually probably doesn't have the part-time job on the weekends either. Yeah, rain conditions are like, okay, you can't do anything, and there's nothing to do, so just skip the day. Unless you put your animals out like an idiot. That was actually one thing that I found interesting. That was Lewis's unique dialogue for when you give him more. I think the first time he gave it, it was just like, oh, thanks. And that was it. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, one thing I found really odd about uh, Save the Homeland was it was the first one where you couldn't actually just harvest uh, fodder for the cattle. You specifically had to put them outside. You could, you could do that, I would think. It was, it, was either, it was either you couldn't do it, or you were heavily penalized for not doing it, like they would actually become sad if you didn't do it, or something. Which went against everything that I ever knew about Harvest Moon, because I always kept the cows inside the barn 24-7. <laughs> I was not an outdoor grazing farmer. No, I do remember you could cut grass to make fodder in that game. It was just because, uh that game and this game, you already have a field of grass set aside specifically for your animals. Right, yeah. I remember that part. There's something, there's just some reason about you didn't want them inside the barn or else. Uh, this game, they do have a greater increase in affection points if you let them graze outside. Though affection does increase if you just feed them normally. There's no real penalty either way. Right. Here we're going to see the benefits of going to the cafe early on in the game. Later, once we've upgraded our house, along with the refrigerator, we'll also get a bath and a toilet. Both of which re-energize us, believe it or not. Okay, wait. Yes, including the toilet. The bath makes sense. The toilet, not so much. All, my my knee-jerk thought was how you get 10 health back when you use the toilet in Duke Nukem 3D. <laughs> like, that makes no sense. Is it just that much of a relief or something? I mean, honestly. That's an apt comparison. I think you, that's about as much as you regain when you use the toilet in this game. Well, there you go. Just kind of a sliver. The uh, sad thing is you can only use those once a day. Once you've done that, you don't regain any more strength when you do it again. Right, yeah. And understandably so. You have to get into the uh, fruit and vegetable loops before you can do game-breaking nonsense like that. Right. I don't know if it breaks the game. It does help in getting your cash up. Ridiculously. Maybe not break the game, but doing that kind of thing where you're awake 24-7 and you're just 
like living off of the Red Bull you produce in your own home. <laughs> right. What does annoy me a little bit and kind of hampers that is that only herbs and herbal foods recover wariness. Everything else just recovers strength. Right. So you gotta be kind of finicky with everything else you make. Yeah, maybe an attempt at a limiting factor in this game. When did, uh, what year did this come out again? This was 2010. 2010. Yeah, I think that was after Magical Melody. I think that was from 09. Melody was on the GameCube. I want to say, like, 07 or 08. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, because I know people would do the, uh, we do the stamina loops on that, like, all the time. Yeah, I remember, Friends of Mineral Town, there's a spa right outside the mine. And as long as you're just in the spa, you recover strength. So, <laughs> you could just make a crap ton of cash from that alone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm remembering that, especially what with the mine and that. Isn't that the, I think that's the one that had, like, 100 floors or something. Something like that, yeah. I get incredibly lucky fishing here. I know, you're just like the... <laughs> yeah, when you when you just have the first fishing rod, you don't collect a lot of fish, so I'm... Like, there's not a lot of types of fish you can collect, so I'm just collecting a crap ton of black rock fish. I'm disbelieving what I'm seeing right now. You are not using a fishing rod. You are shooting rods of lightning into the water and just collecting all the fish afterwards. What surprises me is... Normally, you're going to catch trash. I caught one boot, and the rest is black rockfish. <laughs> There's an item we can get later that... It's called fish feed, but what it really is is trash removal. Ah. Also, sudden big fish. An <laughs> albacore. What? How? Where is this island? I want to throw a fucking fishing rod just out off a beach and catch a tuna. <laughs> Where is this island located? Also, you saw my character looked like you were basically going to die. Yeah. And now I'm not. Hooray. The power of the herbs. You know those herbs, man, they make everything better. Yeah, especially when it's two days in a row. <laughs> Apparently it didn't do you any disservice for the fishing. Apparently. I don't know if that had anything to do with it. Like, I know that that's a thing, like, fishing while raining. Like, the fish get excited about that because they think, ooh, you know, things are coming in the top, that means food. But I think this was a bit silly. Yeah. Also, that door did not know what to do with those guys coming in and out. No, it did not. I do know rain changes up the type of fish you get. I didn't know that it had anything to do with how many fish you catch. Either it did, or you just got, like, the Grandmaster luck about the whole thing. I guess so. I'm hanging on to at least one rockfish and the albacore so I can give those to Ponta. Right. You don't need to give them to Ponta for the recipes. Those you can make on your own when you uh, get the kitchen. Right, yeah. So, best to stick with the fish prints from him. That's great, though. I just caught this tuna off the coast. Here, you can have it. It's clearly not an actual tuna. <laughs> But I also caught a crap ton of these tiny little dinky things. I don't even know if you can eat them. Oh yeah, three of those are worth as much as a tuna. <laughs> uh, but thanks to the little fishing, we basically got as much money back as we spent buying all those tools from Lewis. Right. So in the next time, we should be able to have our next chicken hatched. Gonna start taking care of the horses again, and I'm gonna pretty much just cut off here the voting on the horse, the red horse. It's gonna be the horse we're gonna go for. Alrighty. And we'll see what else happens. 
Alrighty then.